I'm saying, in closing, and I am closing, <coughs> that what you have to do is take a holistic look. Now that, not only at your position in the world, but your potential in the world. You have to learn how to convert everything into an instrument of liberation or leave it alone. You have to realize there was no Greek fraternities and sororities until they were introduced to secret African societies. People get all dewy-eyed over something that was imposed on them in order to control them without understanding that. That's another impure effort. So it bothers me, and although I have good personal friends who are Muslim, that not a single Muslim scholar have dealt with that 1,000 years of African independence before slavery and how the Arabs from the north systematically destroyed these nations. They actually, it did not occur. 1591, from Morocco, an army was launched against these great independent stations, in, independent nations in inner West Africa. These were great states. And because of the poor communication between African and African, there was enough armies in these, uh, in these states to march down to the coast and to drive every slave trader into the sea. But the communication between African and Africa was so poor. Even today, the East Africa is not too clear about what's happening in West Africa. And nobody knows what's happening in North Africa because the conspiracy to hold on to Africa is happening in South Africa and in North Africa. So the whites in North and South Africa are willing to play a part, and the pseudo-whites in North Africa are willing to play a part. In all this world, you have no friends, but if there are a million, a billion of you on the face of this earth scattered all over the world, what do you need with a friend other than yourself? Why can't you turn inward on yourself and say, I will wear no clothes I don't produce. Start with your underwear. I wear no shoes that's not, that's not made by a brother. You're creating a shoe factory, employment at once. Start buying aeroplanes, break them down and study them, and later on make aeroplanes. What this whole thing is about is the restoration of confidence. It has been the role of these handmaidens of colonialism to destroy your confidence in yourself. You don't believe that you can look like a god. You don't believe a black father in your home is to some extent a god. That doesn't won't make the black woman less than a goddess. Because we produced the first human society that recognized and respected the female god. We produced the first human society that you can't be a king unless you got a queen. You can't be a god unless you got a goddess. So you can see all of these social ills that people are defending now, none of it started in our countries. I defy anyone alive, and those who want to come alive, come back and prove me, I invite them too, to show me one single case of sexual deviance, a maladjustment, any place on the African continent for the coming of foreigners. I defy you to show me one case of teenage pregnancy, one case of ill treatment of women. We got confused with someone else's ideas, someone else's concept and definition of us. What we have to understand is that faith has not spared us for an idle reason. A whole lot of people who've been hit less than us are extinct. What is there in us that made us strong enough to take this heavy blow? 500 years of slavery, one way or the other. Slavery, neo-colonialism. What made us strong enough to survive? What has faith saved us to do? And inasmuch as we gave the world its first humanity, faith has saved us to give the world its last humanity.
what we have to do is to believe it, to believe that we are worthy of it, and to believe that we are capable of it. What black studies should be about, what black religion should be about, is the restoration of the confidence, and the restoration of the confidence that we must rule the state again. There is not an imitation nation, that not a, an independent nation in Africa, or the Caribbean Island. They're all imitation European states. And what we have to understand is that the nation state is stagnant. The Africa did not live in a nation state, they lived in a territorial state. The Africa learned something very basic. Cultures have to be fertilized by cultures. People have to be fertilized by the interaction between cultures and cultures. This insecure European tightened his borders, you know. You got a passport to come here? The word passport is not in any African language. The things he invented to restrict himself, he imposed on other people. Once we gain confidence in ourselves, and once we look at that person staring back at us from that mirror and like what we see, and don't move from that mirror until you like what you see. <laughs> then, in coordination with other African people throughout the world, we will give the world a new lease on life. We will turn to all of our people and not one part of them. Because we came from a matrilineal society that respected women to the point the lineage came down to the female side. We must answer the call of the great African-American poet, Margaret Walker who said, let the dirges end, let a new peace begin. Let us write a new covenant for the freedom of ourselves in the world. African men throughout the world need to step forward and answer Sister Margaret and say, Sister Margaret, we have heard your call. And because we have never been a society that excluded women, with our women at our side, we are ready to pick up the challenge. We are ready to start a revolution that will change the world. We won't get ready tomorrow because tomorrow's things are left to tomorrow. We will start our revolution right now and we will start it with ourselves. Thank you.